Good morning. The Lord be with you. It's great to see you this morning. I want to welcome you to worship. I pray the Lord will speak to your heart during this time of worship and uh, open up your life in your relationship with the Lord and with those around you. Uh, we want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us in a particular way. And please, everyone, make sure you fill out the uh, friendship pads as they go down the uh, pew and that we might have a record of your time and visit with us. Also, we're working on putting together new membership classes, and we have had many of you all visiting with us for a long time, and if you'd like to, to join this uh, great community of faith as we serve together, please let uh, one of the pastors know or call up the office. We were going to get together on uh, Wednesday, May 24th to have Pastor Pie time together. Can I come? Please do. Okay. What's your favorite kind of pie? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. We will have a pumpkin pie with whipped cream, at least one. And so uh, we invite you to come. And if pumpkin's not your favorite pie, let me know and we'll take care of that. How's that sound? Sounds good. Okay. We have lots of announcements today. So, Okay. Um, we do have lots of announcements. We are going to be celebrating our graduates from anything they've graduated from. Make sure you fill out the forms. Get that to the church office. And I think we're going to be recognizing them. June 11th. On June 11th um, during worship service. So just, just a prayer for them and, and congratulations. So uh, make sure you get that information to us so we know who is graduating. While I'm talking about kids, I want to mention that Confirmation Sunday is June 4th. Please plan to be here to celebrate Confirmation. We have three great kids who have been working very hard to kind of figure out what it means to be followers of Jesus Christ. And Amen. it'd be great if we could all support them in their journey. Amen. Uh, we do have the St. John's food distribution this Saturday morning, uh, and so uh, what time is that? Barb, what time is Jude, that? Barbara, where are you? 7.30. 7.30 Saturday morning at St. John's, we're going to help distribute food for folks who uh, need food when they come through there. Uh, and then also our summer lunch programs, we're getting folks to sign up for that. When do they start, Barb? On the 9th of June. 9th of June. Okay, so in June... So please, if you, uh, if you want to volunteer for that, either get in touch with Barb or the office or us. And there's a sign up, is there a sign-up sheet in the, in the Hoffman Hall? Okay, so if you would like to go to Barbara's bedroom and sign up. Wow, that's scary, Barbara. <laughs> Uh, the, Lord, the Lord's peace be with you. Okay, anyway, but, okay all right. Anyway, let's let the, let the office know. That that good? Yeah, that, okay. that sounds good. really okay. good. <laughs> um, so on May 20th, Oasis, our women's ministry, is hosting our last really big event of this, like, seasonal year. We are hosting Rejuvenate, which is a local plant store that has some beautiful plants. Um, Ashley, who is the owner, will come. We will decorate some little pots. We will replant or repot the plants. And she also has a little um, educational time about mental health um, and the various disorders. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Cool. So it's a great time to have Ashley come and do that. You can go to our church website to find out the information. There are three different pricing tiers depending on what you want to do. That will be May 20th at 10 o'clock, and we would love for everybody to come and celebrate spring and celebrate one another. Sorry, not everybody, just the girls. To celebrate spring and celebrate one another, and um, there's little information cards in Fellowship Hall if you want to take a look. Just when I was feeling included. Okay, all right. Our congregational meeting is the 21st of this month, so that's in two Sundays from now, and it's our annual congregational meeting. Uh, we invite you to be a part of that and come and... and uh, find out where we are. We'll be getting the reports out soon. On uh, May 17th, that's a Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we, you can come and ask any questions you want to about the annual meeting, annual meet reports and stuff. We'll be in Hoffman Hall. We'll have uh, some refreshments and stuff, light refreshments, and we invite you to be a part of that conversation. All right. Um, last thing I want to mention is on May 19th from 6 to 6.30, we're hosting a gathering of our youngish adults, people who have children in school, our young single adults. 30 minutes, come, say hey to Pastor Bo and me and Pastor Roy. Um, we just want to see you, say hello, see how we can serve you, see what your needs are, and say goodbye. So please plan to be here between 6 and 6.30 on May 19th. Amen. Amen. Let us worship the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord. 
I'll invite you now to join me in the call to worship as printed in the bulletin or on the screen. Let's take a moment just to breathe. And let this be our prayer today. Like newborn infants, let us long for the pure spiritual milk. So that by it we may grow into salvation. Since indeed we have tasted that the Lord is good, let us come to him. A living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let us be built into a spiritual house. That we might be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that we may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Once we had no mercy received, but now we have received mercy. Let us pray. Lord, because of your mercy, we come before your seat of glory, and we ask that you will bestow mercy on us again. Indeed, Lord, build us into one house, a house where you rule, where your spirit dwells. Let this time that we have together be a time of building, rebuilding, and refreshing. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. We are going to see the King. Got no more crying. Thank you, sir. We are going to see the King. Which one am I supposed to use then? And then if we're running out, then. You may be seated. Well, some of you all got that on two and four, and I'm very proud of you. Some of you all are still Presbyterians to the core. God bless you. God bless your little hearts. There we go. All right. What a perfect time for confession. The Lord is our rock, our foundation, the one who never fails. We have doubts and questions which we use as excuses to think and act irresponsibly, but the Lord calls us to be our honest, real selves. 
Too often we disobey God's truth and reject God's love. Let us seek God's mercy and forgiveness to heal our thoughts and our actions. Let us lift our hearts up together in silent confession. And now together, Lord, we confess that we close our hearing to your truth and justice. We, in the middle of social isolation, try to isolate and protect ourselves from the world's pain. We turn away from the poor, needy, and oppressed. We reject your will for us. O oh God, deliver us from ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus tells us, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The Lord will never let his own be put to shame. We are called to proclaim the mighty acts of God who drew us out of the shadows of hiding and into God's marvelous light. In Christ we receive mercy and forgiveness. Thanks be to our merciful and loving God. Amen. Let us stand and sing together, Oh, How I Love Jesus. And the children can come forward at this time, too. Huh? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. All the way up. Come all the way up. You guys, come. We're gonna sit up here because I have to. I have to lay something on the floor. So I want you to come and kind of sit in a circle all the way up here with me. Can you make room? Is there room for all of you? Come on, you can do it. Yeah. Can you come a little closer? Come sit by me. Are you hiding? I can still see you. Okay. So, what is this? What is this? It's a map. A map? <laughs> yeah, I had a hard time finding one of these, I got to tell you. But, you know, when I was little, like you guys, and my family would go on trips, we would get out this big old map, and we would draw a red line from where we were starting to where we wanted to end up. And we had to like figure out what all these little tiny roads were, and we had to know what north and south was. And one of us, one of my, either my sister or me, always had to be kind of in charge for a little while of the map. So this is what we used. And do you know what the hardest part about using this was? Folding it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very hard to fold these maps. In fact, after I um, did my online children's worship, I had to have a scout fold it back up for me because I couldn't do it. And I'm going to have her do that again later. But so after I got a little bit older, we didn't have to use the maps anymore. We used something called MapQuest. Hmm, right? Yeah, it's old. It is old. You're right. So we would go on our computers, on our great big, huge desktop computers, and we would pull up this program, and we would type in where we wanted to go, and we would get this handy turn-by-turn -turn printout of where we had to go. Now, it was cool because I no longer had to try to read a map and figure out what direction north was, which I still don't fully grasp, but I had these turn-by-turn -turn instructions and a little map that went along with it just in case I was confused. So we would use this, and the hard part about this is when you're driving and you're trying to read paper, it's not real good. So how do we get our directions now? Yes? We use um, a map on, like, like um, on our phones or yeah. on our cars. We use a map on our phones or on our cars, yeah. And on these little bags, they say open the map and how it says our school government. Okay, so your mom says, hey, Siri, help me get where I got to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
We can use Google Maps. You're right. It's so much easier now. You know, I had a, a little mishap with my car recently, and I had to stop, and I had to call for assistance. I didn't know where I was. So I got up my phone, and I said, hey, Siri, where am I? And she told me. <laughs> it was pretty handy. But the reason I'm talking about maps today is Pastor Roy is going to be reading from the Gospel of John. Now, Jesus was sitting with his friends, with some of the disciples, and he was explaining to them that he had to go away. But he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he told them that they would be joining him again someday. So in the scripture, in chapter John 14, verse 5, it tells us that Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Probably they didn't even have one of these back then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus said to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So for us, for people who believe in Jesus and we're doing our best to follow Jesus, this is our Google map. Yeah. Well, actually, it's probably more like a map because we also can get this on our phone. Did you know that? Did you know you can get a whole Bible on your phone? Yeah. What? Yeah, you can. It's pretty cool. Well, I bet your mom has a phone. I have a tablet. You have a tablet? You can get it on your tablet. I have a tablet too. So many ways to get, yeah, you can get it on your tablet. So many ways to get God's Word. And God's Word is like a map for how to find Jesus and how He wants us to live our lives. Pretty cool, right? So we have maps to get us places on our roads, and we have the best map ever to help us walk with Jesus and be the Christian people that God calls us to be. Got it? Yeah. yeah? Good. Good job. Okay, let's do an echo prayer. Prayer hands. Dear God, Dear God. thanks for the map, for the map. To, draw to draw us to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Great job, guys. You can head on out. Lord, we do love you indeed, and we do pray that you will make your way known to us as we read your word. Let your light shine be the light that we'll need in front of us. In your name we pray, amen. First reading today comes to us from Psalm 31, verses 1 to 5, and then 15 to 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Into your hands I commit my spirit you have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Verses 15 and 16. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord for God's people. Won't you please stand and sing with us? With melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears 
are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer. Thank you very much. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. It's interesting, what was it? Two Sundays ago, it was John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, and now it's John 14, verses 1 through 14. It makes it easy to remember. I like that. So whoever divided up this, the, the verses did a good job. Hear the word of the Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. <laughs> Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still don't know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not then believe me, believe because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, 
The one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace be with you. Grace and peace. If you listen to my recorded uh, a sermon, just forget about it because I got a different one this morning. Uh, uh, I, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm not really happy with any of my sermons, but uh, I was less happy with it. Although, in that sermon, I talked about four things that we need to remember. Remember, this is Jesus talking to the apostles on the night in which he was betrayed. He just sent Judas out and told him to go do what he was going to do. All the disciples said, why did Judas go out? Of course, Jesus had said, Somebody's going to betray me, and they couldn't. Fit. I don't understand the disciples, except that I just understand us, and we're just about as dumb as the disciples were. We ask stupid questions, don't we, sometimes? And the Lord says, I've been with you that long, and you don't even know me? Come on, get your act together. Happens to me all the time. But after all that conversation, then Judas is on his way out to betray Jesus, and he talks to the apostles during this most anxious, the highest anxiety in their time together, and Jesus lets them know, number one, I'm going to take care of you. You have a home. You have a place. I'm going to go prepare it for you. Then I'm going to come back and get you. That where I am, you will be with me also. We will be together. A true home. And then he says, what? You know how to get there. And then (laughs) Thomas goes, duh. I don't know how to get there. We don't know how to get there. And Jesus says, what? I am the way, the truth, and the life, like we had in the children's sermon. No one comes unto the Father except by me. Now notice he's talking to his chosen, right? This is a passage to God's, to Christians, those of us who are chosen by the Lord. Sometimes we forget that we think we know different ways to get to the Father, but there's only one way for us to really get to the Father. Who is that through? Jesus. We have to remember that. We're the ones that forget it more than the rest of the world. We really do. So remember, he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Now, those are not abstract ideas. He's talking about himself. We don't get to heaven by what we know. We don't get to heaven by the way we read, if we read Eric Fromm, The Art of Loving. That doesn't get us there. We don't get there in any other way about studying philosophy and syllogisms and knowing things, we get there through Jesus. That's a personal relationship. When Christians forget that our relationships with the Lord is the key, that relationships are the key to our life in this world and eternity, when we forget that, then we've turned into things into things, and we've turned Lord into something to use. After that, he lets them know that he and the Father are one, right? Uh, Dave uh, Steinberg loved that gobbledygook going back and forth. I'm in the Father, and me, and I'm in the Father, and he's in me. It's almost as bad as Paul we talked about, right, David? It's just right there. And so, uh, but we look at it, and what he says is what? The Father and I are one, right? If you've seen me, you've seen... Say that again. I couldn't hear the car. The Father. Okay, thank you. Okay. And so we, we recognize that that ha- he tells, and then he tells the disciples how they're different. <laughs> right? The Father tells him what to say, so he does what? Says it. And the purpose of doing that is to glorify Jesus himself or to glorify the Father, the person, right? The personality of God. And so at that point, we're talking about the relationship. And, and that is the outline of this passage. If you want to go back and read that that way, you can do it. Or listen to my sermon that's online, you can do that. But today, I want you to know how important it is to have a place to belong. A place to belong. A place to call home. A place where you don't have to act. A place where you can relax and be yourself. A place where you know people love you and accept you with all the warts, with everything else that comes with you. A place that's home. And Jesus tells the apostles, just before they go through the most anxious time of not being at home and no place to rest, he says, I am going to make a place for you, 
a home for you where you can be at home and at ease and at peace. And not only am I going to go fix up a place for you, I will come and bring you to that place. Is that comfort or not? We all know what home can be like when it's really clicking, right? Is that just wonderful or not? You know, my mama said when she married dad, dad never had a home. His folks separated when he was six years old. So the first home he ever had was with mama. <laughs> and mother didn't know that socks could find so many places to rest. She didn't know that at all. And, 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 and dad talked about how, how mom made a home for him. And he, he said it just, he, he couldn't express it. All he could do was experience it and feel it. Mom and Grandma Thorsine were looking out the kitchen window while they were washing and drying the dishes. And Dad was out working on a car, and all of a sudden this wrench went flying across in front of him. And my mother goes, oh, it must really be windy out there. There was no way she was going to admit to Grandma that Dad sometimes got a little frustrated with the car. Although we all do from time to time, don't we? I think I still have torn knuckles from when I was younger. A home. A home. Now we look at this building, we remember this church, and we see the faces of the people we love, and this is home, right? And when things go haywire at home, man, it is tough. It is tough. And those of us who are here are called to make this place home as we personally relate to the Savior, as he relates to us, and as we relate to each other. And there are people who have left us in the last year, right? Looking for a new home. Have you ever tried to find a new home? It's a hard thing to do. My sister and I went to Texas to, be, uh, to experience stuff, and on the way back, I remember we visited all these folks, and then we were on our way back, and we came across the Oklahoma line, I usually don't like going across into Oklahoma, but it was on the way home. And I looked over at Jan and I said, hey, let's go home. And she said, yes, let's go home. And we knew that meant coming back to Illinois to be with our family and back to home. There's something about going home, the anticipation, the joy, the hope, the comfort that comes to that. In John, the 8th chapter, verses 31 and 32, Jesus says, and it says in the text, to the Jews who had believed in him, I say to the religious folk who believed in him, okay, try. Uh, John was trying to say, hey, to be a Jew and to be a Christian are not the same thing at the time. And so I can say for us, too, to be religious and to be a Christian are two different things, right? Right? Okay, all right. I'm not trying to make you clap on two now. This is much easier. Okay, all right. And he said, to those who were believing in him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We've heard that last part all the time. The truth will set you free. <laughs> we forget all the stuff that comes before it. I love the way the New Jerusalem Bible translates. It's a, it's a warm translation. It's a homey, down home type translation. It says, if you make your home in my word. If you abide, continue in my word. If you make your home in my word, then you are truly my disciple. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you make your home. Are you at home in God's word? <sighs> right? Is it familiar enough with you that it's clicking around there, the stories? Uh, maybe not verse by verse memorization, but the stories. Have you ever been frustrated by somebody that could quote scripture faster than you could? Even, even your pastor has been there. Yeah. Uh, there are three definitions for word, the word of God, according to, to uh, uh, Martin Luther and according to Scripture and according to our Christian tradition. The first word of God we usually think about is what? Hello? <laughs> hmm? The creator word of God. That's when God speaks through prophecy. 
Yeah, and speaks. And that's really, that's usually our second one we remember. However, it says the word of the Lord came into me and the prophet speaks, right? And we see that in preaching nowadays, okay? That's how we understand. Because preaching, uh, uh, prophecy is not as much foretelling what's going to happen as to this is the way it is right now. Sometimes we don't like preaching about this is the way it is right now. That's when pastors usually get fired. But, you know, the, uh, but, but I can tell you it's true that when God speaks directly to us, uh, as it speak, he speaks through the, the sermon, the preacher. I think it, that's an inspired moment. And I think, and if it upsets us, you know what that means? <laughs> that's the one we ought to be listening to. That's what that means. Okay. Secondly, the word of God is known as scripture, right? Right? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, right? And we think about scripture as God's word. And, and, we know that that's uh, God's word right there. And when we talk about the Reformation and we talk about our faith and we talk about how we know truth, we go to God's word, usually scripture. But sometimes we will have heard something inspirational that really caught our attention from a, a sermon in, in a prophecy on, on a Sunday morning or during the week. And that would really, and that's God's word too. What's the third definition of God's word? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word, what, came and became flesh and dwelt among us. That is the ultimate Word of God, the person of Jesus himself. In the Revelation, the first chapter, verses 4 and 5, it talks about Jesus being the faithful and true witness. That's the truth. Faithful and true witness. That is the word of God. That means that we are not tied to God through Jesus Christ in some type of a technical jargon or any type of philosophical approach or any long passages of memorization. We're tied with Jesus Christ, the word of God, as a person. We usually refer to him as the second person in the Trinity, right? Right? The Lord in flesh, the God human with us. Jesus who showed us how to live. Jesus who lived among us. Jesus who walked among us. Was with the apostles on that night. And we forget that our faith is not a relationship with a set of, of doctrines and platitudes. Our faith is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Martin Buber, the great uh, rabbi, wrote in the uh, uh, 1950s or 60s. And, and I was amazed that no one in our Sunday school class knew this dude you got to look him up and read this book, The I Thou. And he talked about, this wonderful rabbi talked about the difference between seeing people as objects and people as people. If everything is transactional, which seems to be our society nowadays, what can I get from you and, and how can I get it at the best price and how can I do it with the least work or whatever that we do in our relationships and the way we use each other as things, as it's, he says that true humanity, true living, true participation, true freedom comes in treating people like people. Knowing that they are people. And I believe in the Christian faith through Jesus Christ, knowing our Savior as the person who comes to us, who lived for us, who still lives for us, and who sends the Holy Spirit to live within us. That is the way, the truth, and the life. It's experiencing living in the midst of it, not following it like a map, I'm sorry, but that it helps. Or not just using Jesus when we need some help through a hard time, but knowing that the Savior is with us all the time. We sing, and he with me, and he with me, and he tells me I am his own. Okay, is that relationship? Do you walk with him? Do you talk with him? Do you hear him say, hey, you belong to me. You are my own. I'm preparing a home for you. That's where I'm going, and I'll come back, and I'll get you. And you'll come home. And that home will be perfectly made for you. And I want you to know I'm with you through all the struggles in this world, through all the hurts, through all the pains, through all the confusion, through all the difficulties, through all the ambiguity, everything that comes your way, I am with you. Because you see, our Christian faith is with the Savior. Jesus told the apostles, <laughs> 
Fox have, foxes have dens and birds have what? Nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. You see, that's because he's on the way to prepare a place for us. He's always on his way. He's always in the journey. So when we feel like we're always on our way and we haven't arrived, we're walking with the right person. We're walking with the Lord and he's walking with us because we are on a journey to where he has prepared a place for us and we'll meet him as he comes and gets us and takes us there because you see, the Lord is with us, period. He is our home. Jesus said to those who are believing in him, if you make your home in the word, then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is our task, it is our calling to make this family home for everyone the Lord sends us. And sometimes people take, uh, I mean, have you ever been a, a, a younger son and decided to go off on your own? It's a non-sexist thing. You be a younger daughter too. Have you ever done that? And then come home? Have you? Let's make this place God's home for us and for those he brings home to us. Let's make this place God's home for those that the Lord sends us. Because you see, our Savior, the person of Jesus himself and the Holy Spirit living within us is the way, the truth, and the life. It is the place prepared for us by our Savior. Amen. Please confess with me our faith as we uh, say, read, or whatever the Apostles' Creed together, okay? You want to stand up? I'll try it. Okay. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Just as we can have comfort in knowing that Jesus is with us always, that he has a forever home prepared for us, we have the same comfort when we go to God in prayer because we can be assured that he is always available. He is always ready to listen. Even when we feel like we've prayed the same prayer over and over again and we're bothering him, he is good and loving and wants to hear what we have to say. Let's go to him in prayer now. Father, thank you for your presence in our life, for the salvation we have through Jesus Christ, for the presence of the Holy Spirit within us as we go through each moment of our day. We thank you for your word, that it guides us to Jesus, that it helps us learn what it means to know him and to love him and how dearly how dearly we are loved. I thank you, Lord, for this family of faith here in this place at this time. I ask, Father, that you would strengthen us, that you would give us more and more genuine, deep love for one another, that, that you will expand our ability to, to know how you're calling us to live while we're here on this earth. I pray that you will make this place and each member of it a beacon of hope, a, a calling for people to come and get to know Jesus, maybe even if they don't realize that's what's happening. I lift this church family to you, Father. I, I, I lift every care, every struggle, every joy, every celebration. In particular, Father, I pray for Jim Huey and his family as they cope with the loss of his niece. I pray for Dave Jeffries for his continued healing. And Father, in, in this country, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, and so I take this moment to lift to you all who are experiencing a mental health crisis for their family. 
I pray that you would normalize conversation about mental health, not only out there in the world, but here within the church, that we can be supportive of one another. Not only do our bodies fail, Father, but sometimes our emotions and our mental health fail as well. I pray, Lord, for, for something to give with regard to gun violence. I pray, God, for a solution that is helpful and not harmful when it comes to the migrant crisis that we are facing. I pray, Lord, that if any one of us is part of a solution to any of the things that we fear or that trouble us, that you would make that clear to us and that we could become a part of a healing, a part of, of a voice of faith. I thank you, Father, that you are good. I thank you for the spring weather, for the change of seasons that we experience. I thank you that we can know that we are never alone, that you are with us always, and that you have given us people of faith to hold us accountable, to hold us when we struggle, to be with us in fun and fellowship. I just praise you, God, for the people that are gathered here today, Father. This is a joyous thing to gather together on a Sunday morning and worship you, to take a break, a respite from the rest of the world. And I pray that the things that we learn and experience and remember during worship go with us and sustain us through the week. Father, we are united in our faith. And as people of faith, we pray together the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time when we come together to celebrate our Lord's feast, which he offers to each and every one of us, to everyone who knows him and has been baptized. We want you to know that if you are visiting with us, this communion table is for you also, as the Lord offers it to you. Uh, just for, we'll be coming down the side aisles, right, or the down the center aisle? Center. center aisle from the back first and through the front, come down to the front. We'll have the elements down here in the front. And then we also have uh, additional the uh, 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 cups and bread that are separate if you want to take those that are separate, okay? And you'll notice that the pastors are wearing gloves, okay? Right. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence in the midst of your body, your church. We thank you, Lord, for your visiting us, us with your Holy Spirit. We ask you, Lord, to give us a deeper sensitivity to your presence and to your moving and working through our lives. Bless this bread, bless this cup, renew us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it, and said, this is my body which is broken for you. This take, eat it in remembrance of me. And after the bread, he took the cup, and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We invite you to come. As you receive the elements, please Take them back to your seat and we'll take the elements together.
body of Christ. Our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, said, I am the bread of life. Anyone who eats of me shall never hunger or thirst. Our Lord said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. The Apostle Paul tells us in the first recording of communion in Scripture in 1 Corinthians that for as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until Christ comes. Are we ready here? For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until Christ comes. Amen. We will take the offering at this time, right? All right. I was thinking as through the service about the words that Pastor Roy was speaking about Jesus being the Word and living in us and how easy it is sometimes to accept that and sometimes how hard it is to accept that. If Christ lives in us, he calls us to a life of service. He calls us to a life of giving. And this is our reminder in the service that we are called to be servants of God. With that in mind, I invite you to bring yourself before the Lord. Give your best because the Lord lives in us. Amen. Let us pray. Father, indeed you are good to us. And as we remember the sacrifice, we remember that you love us. In the good days and the bad days that we go through, your love is still with us. And we're thankful, Lord, that you walk with us. You talk to us and you call us your own. So at the time, Lord, bless us as we go from this place, for us to remember and to be your children, those that are called by your name. In your name we pray, amen.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you true peace. And may you walk with him who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.